Thank you, everyone. It's such an honor to be here. What an amazing event, and I'm learning so much from all of you. So it's an honor to be able to hear, to tell my story of what's happened to me over the past two and a half years. On December 13th, 2012, I was a stay-at-home mom of five children in a suburb of Indianapolis. I did not consider myself politically active at all. I had been a communications executive and stayed home for about five years. I really assumed that my lawmakers were doing what they should, that they were making laws that would protect me and protect my family, and I was going about my business. Flash forward two days later, December 15th, 2012, and I helped found one of the fastest growing grassroots movements in America. So what happened <laughs> between those two days? What happened, as Eric said, was Sandy Hook. 26 Americans were slaughtered in the sanctity of an elementary school in Newtown, Connecticut. That changed my life, and it changed the lives of so many mothers in this country who couldn't believe that this was America. We had a choice. We could leave America, or we could stay and fight. And we stayed, and we're fighting. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a politician. I'm not even a trained activist. I'm really every American woman. I'm every American mother. But by using my communications experience, I helped change who is talking about gun violence in America and how we talk about it. I took an online discussion and turned it into an offline grassroots movement. We are changing our country's culture of gun violence through conversation. Despite how powerful and successful Moms Demand Action has become in just two years, I have to say that I hugely regret not acting sooner. I lived in Texas when one of America's first shootings happened at Luby's Cafeteria. And then I had very small children when Columbine happened. I didn't have the bandwidth to act. And then Tucson, and then Aurora. And for me, Aurora was a turning point because my son Sam, who is 13, or was 13 at the time, was going to see Batman the night after the mass shooting in Aurora. And he happened to see what happened on the news. And when he went to the theater, he had his first of what ended up being many panic attacks because he thought everyone around him was armed. And he actually fled the theater. And that was sort of a bubble of innocence that had been broken. He realized he wasn't safe. So five months later, that was just five months between Aurora and Sandy Hook, my first thought when I saw the horrific news coming in over my television was, well, I have to make sure Sam doesn't see this. But of course he did, because it was everywhere. They were talking about it at school. And his reaction was complete and total indifference, because this happens all the time in America. And that was what he realized. So his act, reaction of indifference made me outraged. And it just wasn't acceptable to me as a parent. And in fact, I was in training to become a yoga teacher at the time. And the next day, after Sandy Hook, I was in a yoga teacher training class. And obviously, outrage and the tenets of yoga aren't really very compatible. So I rolled up my mat, and I went home, and I thought, well, I'm going to look online for something like Mothers Against Drunk Driving. And I couldn't find anything that was like that for guns. And so I thought, well, I'll start my own Facebook page. And please keep in mind, I am no social media guru, or at least I wasn't at the time. I think I had 75 personal Facebook friends. And within days and then months, we had thousands and thousands of people who liked our page and wanted to get involved. Every mother in America, I think, had the same idea that day was, we have to do something. The page really has resonated with people. You know, it, you don't have to be a policy expert or a professional organizer. You don't have to know much about the issue of gun violence to get involved online. You just have to like a page. So what started originally as an online conversation has grown into an offline grassroots movement. Mothers who wanted to get involved and start their own chapters. And a year, and two years later, that's all. Two years later, we have a chapter in every single state of the country and 2.5 million supporters. So why has our movement grown so fast? Because when you learn the facts about gun violence in America, you cannot believe what is happening in our country. People cannot believe that 88 Americans are shot and killed in this country every single day. And that includes eight children or teens. Criminals, domestic abusers, and the dangerously mentally ill can get guns with no background checks online and at gun shows. 
Two million American children live in homes with unsecured guns, meaning they are not locked and they are not unloaded. There have been more than 100 school shootings since Sandy Hook. Keep in mind, after hearing all of this, that very few lawmakers are willing to do anything because of the National Rifle Association's $350 million per year budget. So despite all of this, there are tried and tested solutions that we know work to fight gun violence in this country. Federal background checks, state laws to protect domestic violence victims, responsible storage laws, education. The problem is not that the solutions don't exist. The problem is how they've been presented to the American public. We needed a new conversation, we needed a new messenger, and we needed moms. Because who better to take on an extreme vocal minority who are afraid their guns are going to be taken away than American moms who are afraid our children are going to be taken away? So how are we doing this, given that, as we all know, women are not adequately represented in boardrooms or in state houses? Well, we were the majority of the voting electorate in the last presidential election. Nearly 70% of American moms have Facebook pages and are involved online, and moms make 80% of the spending decisions for their families in this country. So we are leveraging that unique power to change the conversation about guns online and offline. Online, I'll give you an example of what we've done. Perhaps you've heard now of the term open carry. I'm very proud that moms have made this part of the public vernacular because open carry is basically being able to take your loaded long gun out in public and take it to the community, take it to your local store, and it's legal in more than 40 states in this country with absolutely no regulation, meaning no background check and no training. But until you see what that looks like, you can't imagine how terrifying it is. And if you live in New York or California, you don't see this kind of stuff a lot. I live in Indiana, and you do see people taking their loaded AR-15 into the local Kroger to buy a gallon of milk. Moms have made these images go viral, and when they see this, when Americans see this, they know they don't want it in their communities. And then offline, we're doing the similar tactics. We, we started something called Stroller Jams, and this started in Maryland. Right after Sandy Hook, the Maryland governor was going to to uh, pass sweeping gun reform legislation. And our moms showed up in the hallways of the state house to support him. And what we realized was when we have our strollers and our diaper bags and all our baby paraphernalia, you really can't get through the hallway. <laughs> so you know the legislators would have to stop and ask us questions or answer our questions. And we thought, well, this is a stroller jam. This is great. We're going to take this idea, and we're going to do it all over the country, and we have in Congress offices, in state houses, and public transportation, and our local stores, and it's been a very effective tool to use mom power. And then we also have combinations of using online and offline, and a good example of this is some of our corporate campaigns. As you guys may know, a company headquartered right here in Washington, Starbucks, in June of 2013, decided they would change their policy that you, so you could no longer smoke within 20 feet of the store, despite state laws. However, they were still going to follow gun laws according to state law, meaning you could bring your loaded AR-15 in to get a latte, and people were doing that. So we started a campaign online called Skip Starbucks Saturday. Moms were showing how they were having their coffee with gun sense, and then we were putting pressure on them offline as well. We were showing up at stores and talking to managers and having stroller jams and educating customers. And in with, within just three months, we got the CEO, Howard Schultz, of a global organization to get on television and say guns were no longer welcome. So all of the work we do is driven by this very simple concept of what we call gun sense, which is just the idea that we can be doing more to protect our families and our communities from gun violence. And the phrase gun sense has actually been picked up as well by top social media like the New York Times and the Washington Post. And it's part of reframing this conversation that for way too long has been led by the gun lobby. And word choice does matter. We've learned that. We are not anti-gun. We're pro-gun safety. We don't use words like gun control or ban or restrict or prohibit. These words have been promoted to use and incite fear by the gun lobby. We really try to use language that is more uniting and inclusive to non-gun owners and gun owners alike. And we call ourselves a pro-Second Amendment gun safety organization that works to keep guns out of the hands of dangerous people. 
This combination of mom tactics, messaging, and the raw passion of American moms is winning. That's the key here. We are winning. In 2013, moms helped close the background check loophole in six different states. Last year, we helped pass gun laws in six states that will keep guns out of the hands of domestic abusers, and that's red and blue states. Bobby Jindal and Scott Walker both signed those bills. And right here in Washington state, moms were instrumental in helping pass back a background check initiative by popular vote. 60% of Washingtonians <laughs> passed background check legislation. And if any of you have friends in the neighboring state of Oregon, we'll be doing the same thing in April where we're going to pass background check through the state legislature. So please join us. So that will be the 18th state to close its background check loophole. And then on the corporate side, we've got nearly a dozen retailers and restaurants to change their gun policies. Just like policies around attire or smoking, we believe that companies need to have a policy around guns. To say they follow state and local laws does not cut it. Target, Chipotle, Starbucks, Sonic, Jack in the Box, Chili's, Panera, and a whole host of others have changed their policies to either prohibit open carry or to keep guns completely out, and Kroger is next. We're working on Kroger, so please avoid any and all Kroger stores until they do the right thing. And we're not giving up on Congress. We got one million Americans to commit to voting with gun sense in the last midterm elections, and we're gonna do the same thing in 2016. So the wins that we've had in just two and a half years is pretty amazing. We all know this is a marathon, not a sprint in America. Gun issues are pretty polarizing. And the NRA has a 30-year head start. We're going to lose, but we're going to lose forward. It's our phrase, lose forward. And what that means is that even in places where we don't win, we are going to make it harder for the gun lobby to walk into and walk all over state houses across the country. Just this week, if you guys are watching, the Texas legislature is going to pass both open carry and campus carry. Boo, it's right, yes. Guns in the Greek system, what could go wrong? <laughs> so, you know, we're gonna lose that in Texas, but the gun lobby had to work hard for it because moms were there to change the conversation. We showed up and gave testimony at every single hearing at the Texas legislature against these bad bills. We shared images of these people open carrying at the state house and gave examples and videos of the gun extremist bad behavior. We amplified the opinions of people who do have gun sense in the state. As a result, the open carry bill that is gonna pass is not what they call constitutional carry, which means any and all comers can open carry in the state without a background check and without a license. You will have to have a background check to open carry handguns now in Texas. And the campus carry bill, which originally would not let any public institution opt out of campus carry, will now have an amendment that lets state universities choose. So we haven't won them all, and we won't, but we are challenging the gun lobby in a better place for not only Texas, but nationwide. And over the past 30 years, the NRA has used money and fear to define the conversation about gun ownership in America. Moms are reframing the conversation to be about gun safety and responsibility. We took advantage of a moment to change the messenger and a message in a conversation that had been going nowhere for 30 years proving that reframing and redefining a conversation can salvage even the most polarizing social issues. American moms are going toe to toe with one of the most insidious lobbies in the history of our country, and we're winning. Thank you very much.